I'm Khalid Brown. I'm from the Bodo's Research Station. I'm one of the chief livestock research officers. Um, I specialize in animal nutrition and forage research. And I'll give you a, a kind of comprehensive introduction to animal nutrition. Um, so the New Zealand Small Room and Capacity Building Project. This is what we're doing right now. And my aim is again, to make you guys more versed with animal nutrition, small ruminant nutrition. Um, these are the major factors affecting small ruminant production. Beyond that, we're talking about nutrition, right? Who realized that about 50 to 60% of the factors affecting small ruminant production is nutrition based? You realize? Yeah. Feed additives, feed ingredient quality, feed intake, alternative feed stuff. So nutrition is one of the most critical components going forward in the small ruminant production. A matter of fact, it's probably 60 to 50% of your cost. So, Clearly, it is that important. Let's talk about the nutrient requirements. And that vary. It varies according to stage of production, environmental adjustment, animal size and breed, and body condition score. And I want you guys to help again. I want somebody now to tell me, how is it that a stage of production of animal size and breed affect the nutrient requirement? Different stages of production require different amounts of food in the tree. For example, in the great stage, you might need to have a higher effect of production stage, like breeding. You can have less, but that will be different. So, you guys get that? You guys get that? Tell me about environmental adjustment. Um, we brought in some DARPAs from Canada. Their climatic conditions are a bit different to what we have in Jamaica. How would that affect? the nutrient requirement, and even production. Oh, we have to adopt, right? Anybody ever travel overseas in the time when it's, when it's snowing? You see that we have to adopt. We learn that we have to get Vaseline first to keep our mouths masterized. We start drinking a little bit more water, we're drinking less water. So in a case like this, what we're doing, we had animals come in here, here at, here at Hunslow, from overseas. And what we're doing, we're doing a thermoregulation experiment where we're checking their body heat and looking at the difference over generations to come to see how adaptable they're getting to the Jamaican climate. So that is important. Moving animals from one place to the next, you have to think about that environmental adjustment. Even from farm to farm, that change of feed will affect the animal and how they behave. Coming from where you normally get shafted grass to a place to where you have to go and find your own feed will affect how the animal function. But let's look at the important nutrients which we all should know. Energy and fiber, and I put them together as one. It should be separated in a case like this, because we deal with the ruminants, but I put them as one. Protein, fat, we we'll go down to that. Minerals, vitamins, and water. The importance of water. Support all biochemical reactions. So we're talking about respiration, digestion, all that type of stuff. So water is critical. This is the normal growth curve. You have two on it. You have the star farmer and you have the farmer who's not making tea. What I'm saying is that if you understand your nutrient requirement, you will receive a greater weight gain which will increase your profit compared to this farmer. The star farmer clearly understands the systematic approach to feeding the animals. So in a particular time, six months, he might have 100 kgs compared to you at six months and probably getting 60 kg. So if you understand that step-by-step -step process from your lamb to your finishing, you can achieve this weight gain where you get more profit. <laughs>